Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. This is the day that Yah has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to fellowship on Shabbat. Hallelujah. This is the day that he set aside. He said in his word, what did he say about Shabbat? He said, remember it, right? And keep it set apart. And keep it set apart, which means a righteous day. Mm -hmm. Keep it righteous. Okay, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to do here. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Keep it set apart. Keep it righteous. Set apart from the other days. Hallelujah. Of course, we know that in Yah, we keep every day as a righteous day. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So now let's go. Um, today's lesson is going to be titled How to Strengthen Your Relationship with the Most High. Yeah. And before we do that, we're going to have prayer and then we're going to have Rebecca. You're going to read the scripture. Okay. Let's have prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father Yah, we thank you so much, Father Yah, for your guidance. We thank you so much for protecting us, watching over us, even as we slept last night. You watch over us, and we thank you for that, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ask you, Father God, to continue to bless us this day. Bless the words that we hear out of your word, out of your scripture. Bless those words, Father God, that they may be like seeds planted in our minds and in our hearts. We ask you, Father God, to strengthen us, Father God, and show us how to strengthen our relationship with you. Show us how we could get to know you personally, really know you, and not know religion, hallelujah, but to truly know you, hallelujah, to truly have a relationship with you. We love you, Father God. We thank you so much. We ask, Father God, that you cause our day to be productive in you. You cause us to rest in you to be in shalom in you, hallelujah, peace, hallelujah, and continue to cause us to walk in your ways and walk in your spirit. We thank you, Father, Yah. Yahushua HaMashiach's name we pray, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. If you back and give me a scripture. First Corinthians chapter three, verse 14. Any man's work abide which he has built, built therein, therefore he shall receive a reward. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah for your word, Father God. Hallelujah. You know, strengthening your relationship with the Most High is probably the most important thing you need to know how to do. You need to know whether you're getting close to him or if you're drawn away from him, mm -hmm. being drawn away from him. Having a relationship with him should be above everything. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? Right. Having a relationship with Yah should be above everything period now why is that so important i'll tell you what go out in this world and live a life without him and then come back in a few years and tell me how important it is that you know him. because when life get done with you i guarantee you you will be to the point where you will seek him you will be to the point because Yah has a way of allowing things to go a certain way. He has a way of um, guiding you in a certain direction because he wants something from us. What does he want? I want you to understand this first of all, okay? <laughs> you have to understand Yah. And I know that our minds are too finite to truly understand him and his decisions, and we really can't understand him completely, okay? But I want you to get something here, okay? I, I don't want you to get confused because you hear some of these Christian songs, right? 
Lee Song said he, he's out here just desperately searching for a, a soul. I, I need someone to worship me. You know, please come, please come and worship me. You know, I know, I know these Christian songs that made you think that he's begging and crying for you, right? But I got news for you. The scripture says, draw nigh unto him, and then he will draw nigh unto you. So in other words, he's sitting there and he's saying, if you don't make no move toward me, I'm not going to make no move toward you. Seek, and you will what? So if you don't seek, you think he's going to just show up and knock on your door? Let me in, please. <laughs> he may not, but he's not begging. No, he's no. He's not begging, but the word does say that. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. But his knocking is not one of yeah. pleading and begging you. His knocking is far different. His knocking is kind of like the knocking he was doing with um, Jonah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hey, Jonah, I need you to go and do something. Now I'm knocking. I'm telling you, Jonah, what I want you to go and do. And Jonah says, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do what I want to do. And Jonah, okay, Jonah, try it. Jonah couldn't even kill himself. <laughs> Jonah tried to take his own life, right? He told him, he said, toss me overboard. Toss me over into the waters because I'm the reason why this storm is going on. Just throw me over. They tossed him over. Most of us said, no, no. You ain't getting out of this one that easy. <laughs> you know what it kind of reminds me of? It reminds me of the scripture where he says, I just had that scripture in my memory. Not behold, I was standing at the door and knock, but well, he says, You are not your own. You're not your you own. You've been bought with a price. You yeah. have been bought with a price. So but we yeah. understand that we don't belong to ourselves. Our life is not our own, that we have been bought with a price. We will live these lives that we have different. We don't value our lives because we're trying to make it our own. That's he right. Has a path that he's already laid for us. That's so right. We keep going against his path. We're going against his way. So we're going to run into all kinds of stumbling blocks when we go this way. Not saying that you won't come in against any here, but these are all for your good. Right. These over here are going to keep you in your tribulation a little bit longer than if you had just gone the direction he told you to go. Exactly. Because he says his yoke is easy and his burden is a light. But when you go against the grain, ask me how I know. <laughs> how you know? We've done it before. <laughs> We've done it. When we go against the will of the Father, we always hit that rough turbulence. I saw an article the other day where they said the turbulence in this um, airplane was so bad. It was, I mean, horrible to where it was almost a crash because of the turbulence. And so... We have to understand that when we experience spiritual turbulence, it's because we are doing something that is against the will of the Father. Exactly. The you know, it's amazing. I want, I want to share with you something. Because one thing that we don't understand, we don't understand God's will. And so we search it throughout our life trying to figure out what's God's will, what is his will, what is his will for me, right? And we're searching, but we kind of search... Yeah. Um, imagine a person doing this right. Just imagine what I'm saying, right? You out in the nighttime, right? It's pitch black out, like on the land when the moon ain't up. <laughs> you know, it's pitch black, right? And and you're searching, right? But you're searching with the camera aimed at you. <laughs> I don't that sound ridiculous. Uh, you searching for Yah's will, but you got the the flashlight aimed at you, right? Okay, that's what I meant to say. Uh, that's it. Yeah. I meant flashlight. You got the flashlight aimed at you, and so you're walking about in the dark. How in the world that it would even look ridiculous if you saw somebody doing it? Don't you know in the spirit realm that's what it's like? People are searching for y'all with the camera aimed at them. With the flashlight. I'm sorry, I keep saying camera. With the flashlight aimed at them. And so how do you think you're gonna find him and you get the and you get the flashlight aimed at yourself? Don't you understand you gotta know Yah's will and you gotta know how Yah's will work? That's why he told us when you pray, he said, pray in this manner. Huh? What did he say? I'm gonna read it here. Okay.
This is in Matthew chapter six, verse. We're gonna start at verse um, nine. Matthew chapter six, verse nine. The part I'm gonna choose. You can read the entire prayer there. It's nine through fifteen. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 15. After this matter, therefore pray you, our Abba, who established salvation in the heavens, exalted is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as in the heavens. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our transgressions, as we forgive those who transgress against us. And lead us not into the evil inclination, but deliver us from the outer darkness. For us is the kingdom and the power of the Lord forever. Amen. Now, one thing I want you to see here is where it mentions, it says, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So he's basically letting you know his will is going to be done. Right? So then, if his will is going to be done, then we need to seek him according to his will. We need to seek our lives according to his will. Father God, what is your will for me? What is your will? i tell you why that's important, okay? Let's say that we have Yah's will here. This is Yah's will going in this direction, right? And Yah wants you to go in that direction. And he, and he said, this is the direction I want you to go in, right? And you say, no, I don't want to go in that direction because I don't desire to go in that direction. Or you might not believe that that is his will to go in that direction. You may think it's God's will to go in this direction, right? And so you decide to go in this other direction, which is not the will of Yah. So then what do you think he's going to do? You're going to go so far before he calls things to bring you back in the direction that he really wants you to go in. Now, you can start back heading in that direction again, right? And then you decide, nope, 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 nope. I don't want to go in that direction. Into another direction. What does he do? Same thing again. He's going to force his will. He's going to force because his will. Because the scripture right. says that Yah has his way right. in the heavens above yep. and the, the earth, earth below. Beneath. He has. So everything that we think we're doing, like I said before, we are not our own. We have been bought with Christ. Bought Christ. That's right. And so everything that we take, we know, we really don't. Every every direction we want to go in, you can, you can start in that path. But ultimately, now, I want you all to keep this in mind, too. There are times when you can go against the will of the Father that it can bring you to a destruction. That's why we have to be very careful. That's right. You have to be very careful because I'm here to make you or force you back in this way. For some, yeah. he's going to have punishment or judgment that goes beyond just mere chastisement. When you go against his will, in some instances, that could be the end of you. And so we have to keep that in mind. Okay. I remember uh, we talked to this, um, she was actually a Gentile from Michigan many years ago. When she said that she was going against the will of her father, we got a couple of that in Taylor. She yeah. said she was going against the will of the father, and she was doing something. It was actually against her own husband, against yeah. his um, leadership and headship in the house. And the Most High um, afflicted her body so bad, yeah, to where she now has MS. She's unable to do anything without multiple sclerosis. Yeah, multiple sclerosis. She's unable to do anything without her. In a wheelchair, yep. can't do anything. She has to, she's really housebound now because everything she's trying to do is outside of the house. Outside of the house. Despite what her husband wanted her to do. You see, and so the most high afflicted her body, and this was her own testimony. Yep. She said that God did this to me because of my disobedience because she wouldn't be still mm -hmm. and she said nah i can't move yeah she said just like she, she said she said i wouldn't be still i wouldn't I, I was just out and doing what i want to do and she said i wouldn't be still and the most high put her in a wheelchair literally made it so she can't do anything those are her words 
She said, because I wouldn't be still, now I can't do nothing. She said, now I absolutely can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Those are her own words. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why it's important that we understand that we get close to y'all, we get to understand y'all. I'll tell you what, I'm going to tell you, listen to me carefully or something, right? Now, I'm going to give you, some of you already know some of my background because I've already told some of these stories. But I want you to think about what I say to you, right? When I was a teenager, I had certain dreams and things that I wanted to do in my life, okay? And I wanted these things badly, and I didn't want nothing to stop me, and I felt like y'all wanted me to have them. <laughs> I mean, I'm praying for them, and at the, at the same time, not knowing it wasn't his will, right? So as I pressed to go into these things, as some of the doors began to open up, Again, I began to see the wickedness in the doors that were opening up. There was some wicked stuff going on. And so I started to pull back from that into the industry. And that was the fashion industry. I was trying to paint and uh, modeling and all that kind of stuff. So he began to show me all the wickedness in it. And so I was still trying to push, still trying to push to go into it. And then he showed me all the homosexuals that were just in that industry was ridiculous. I mean, it was crazy. And so right away, I, I pulled out, I said, I can't be a part of this. This is crazy, you know. So anyway, here I am now. I got to the point where I ended up. I didn't have a ruach at, 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 at that time too. So when I ended up receiving a ruach, my eyes started becoming more and more open to what his will was. But at the same time, I was fighting. There were things I wanted to do. There were things I wanted for my life that I was interested in, and I was trying to push and do in the most high will for me to go in a different direction. Now the main thing. Long story short, I'm older. I'm so thankful that this is the direction that he wanted me to go in, that this was his will. Now, I'm saying that for a reason. He know you better than you know you. Saying Because you think you know what you want, right? And you don't. You don't. You don't even know what to pray for half the time. Huh? You know how many times we pray and miss for things? You don't even know what to pray for. Some of these things, most I say, man, if I was to give you that thing you asked for, you'd be dead in a week. Because something in that thing could cause you to lose your life even. We're praying for things, don't even know what we're asking for, right? And so we think we know what's best for our life, and we don't. Now, looking back, I can sit back and think about all the things that I love to do that I let go of that I gave up. And I gave them up because circumstances that literally pushed me to give up these things. And when I gave them up, I was just bitter. I was I didn't like the idea to give them up. I didn't, and, and I just was giving up these things one after the other. Things I desired to do, I started just, okay, well, it's obviously ain't for me. And I had an attitude too. I did. I had an attitude toward the most time. I did. I admit it. Yeah, I was a little upset because I felt like well, well, my life could be a lot easier if you would allow this to happen. <laughs> you know? And most I was like, well, I, I, I need you to go in a certain direction. And so he didn't make it easy for me. You know, at first I struggled in, in a lot of things, you know. And finally, when I started going in the direction that things were kind of forcing me to go in, I said, okay, well, it's obvious he don't want me to do this. So let me just go on in this direction. And I started yielding to his will. Guess what? Things started just happening so beautifully laid out. And, and I was like, wow, I was sitting there and say, man, now I look back, I'm like, wow, yeah. This was awesome. I wouldn't trade where we are right now, me and my wife and our life in the direction we're going in for nothing in the world because I know that we're in his will and we're being guided by him. I know that we are. And so I feel confident in knowing that he's going to work it off for my good. It was best for me. I know. Now, had, it, had I had it my way, I probably would have been a police officer. I probably would have been some designer out, designer clothes. These are all the careers and things I sought after. Fisherman, professional bass fisher, somewhere out here, right? Huh? I'm just thinking about all the things I would have done. Huh? I tried the singing thing years ago. I would probably want to be a singer, 
I probably would have, there was a number of things that I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to be a professional model at the time, at one time, a designer, right? I tried to be a truck driver, did that for a minute. I tried some of everything, right? And and I'm so glad that the most I said, nope, 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 nope. Here's where I want you. Now, had somebody came to me 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and said, this is what you're going to be doing, I'd be like, no way. Doing what? I couldn't have seen it. I wouldn't have seen it come out. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have understood. How's he going to get me into something like this? <laughs> and, and I don't even desire that, you know? Mm -hmm. But he did, and it turned out the things that he got me into were things that I loved doing more than I would have loved any of that other stuff I thought I wanted for my life. Yeah. It's kind of funny. I was thinking about you, know, you said 20 years. You have to go a little bit further back. Yeah. You've been married more than yeah. years. Yeah. So you have to go a little bit further back. Yeah. But I remember when I met you, yeah. you didn't want any children. <laughs> <laughs> so this this was definitely not the life you had <laughs> sought after. I didn't want any children. That's right. You see how many kids I got now, right? <laughs> <laughs> so if I was going in my direction, the way I wanted to go, I wouldn't have what I got now. You get what I'm saying? So sometimes we think we know what we want, right? And we don't. But if we yield to Yah and just say, okay, Father, what do you want that's best for my life? What do you want instead of what I want? Okay, let me explain something to you. Yah has a goal he's trying to reach in all of our lives he has a goal he's trying to get us to a certain point a certain place in our lives right and sometimes we're bucking and fighting against him and whatever he's trying to do and it's to the point where we're just just bucking with him right and the most thing i said come on if you would just yield you know just yield can't remind me of a uh imagine this a guy that has a, a horse and he's trying to pull this horse home. Come on here, horse. And the horse is bucking or whatever, right? Just bucking. Now, what if his master said, you know what? Go on and do what you want to do. Let the horse go, right? Go on out there. Do whatever you want to do. I'm not going to tend to you no more. I'm not going to do anything for you no more, right? The horse probably be dead in a month. You know, probably we'd have run it out on the freeway, on the road. If the boss man didn't have a fence to keep him in, Sometimes that's how things are in our lives. If we, if he allow us to literally just let go of us and allow us to go into whatever direction we want to sometimes. And I know some stories. I know some horror stories of people that have literally went down a path of destruction because they want to do what they want to do. Yah has a path. And you have a pain. Now you can't you can't honestly believe that your path is better than Yah's path. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you can't honestly believe that, right? Mm -hmm. But I know, I know I used to think, I used to think it that well, I don't see nothing wrong with what I want. I can see nothing wrong with it either. I mean, I go through the scriptures and a lot of things I want, there's nothing wrong with. Would um want to be a designer of clothes if you're doing it yourself and you ain't all tangled up into the 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 industry you know what i mean by industry okay with the the, the industry that's out there you're doing your own designing of clothes that's according to yet the way y'all want us to dress and look and all of that you know but ain't nothing wrong with um um some of the things that i wanted to do ain't nothing wrong with a lot of that stuff right it was just wrong for me. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? What may be right for you may be wrong for me. What may be wrong for you may be right for me. Okay? As long as it's not sin, according to what the scripture says. Okay? So basically, it's all about, because I, I want to be a police officer. I, I wanted to be that so bad back in the days, you know? Uh, uh, I trained, uh, uh, went and took all the tests and did all of that stuff, you know? Passed the the test for it and everything and still couldn't get that position. Now that I look back, I'm glad I didn't. Boy, am I glad I didn't get that position. In Detroit? <laughs> I, I was going for Southfield, but still, you know. 
But anyway, y'all knows what's best for you. Now, let me say something to you here, and I want you to think about what I'm saying to you. There is no room for selfishness as it relates to y'all's will. Do you hear what I said? One thing I learned about Yah is that he sees selfishness. The selfishness is actually like uh, uh, the enemy yeah. of his will. It's almost like stubbornness, in which the yep. scripture refers to it as witchcraft. It's like the sin of witchcraft. And you know how the Most High feels about witchcraft. So rebellion and stubbornness is just like the sin of witchcraft, which the Most High frowns upon. That's right. And so when we have these little ways about it, we have to understand that he is taking notes. Yes, he is. You know? And the lesson is about how to strengthen your relationship with the Most High. Yeah. I'm going to talk about the relationship with parents and their children. We have always used our children as an example of how our relationship with the father should be. How does a child strengthen their relationship with their parent? I'm going to start with the very young ones. They always sit in the front room. Want to be on their lap? Mommy, can yes. I be on your lap? Mommy, can I have a hug? It was because of Rebecca yeah. that we created uh, what we call. We actually made one when we lived in Michigan. It was called the Mommy Lap Chair. Because she would always say, Mommy, can I sit on your lap? So yeah. we actually made a chair and we had the shape of a head up there, and arms and all of this stuff. And so she said, Mommy, can I sit on your lap? Because I was busy, I would point her to her little chair. There's your lap chair right there. <laughs> because she desired a close relationship with her mommy. Yes. You see. Now, even with um, Papa, Aliyah has always been very close. You know, a lot of young men, they are what you call mama's boys. Aliyah is a daddy's boy. Yeah. He always has been. Always <laughs> has been, yeah. you know, He's always been a papa's boy. And so when you seek a close relationship with your parents, think about that for a moment. You desire to be in the, the company. You want to talk to them. You want to hang out with them. You want to play games with them. You know, hey, mommy, let's play connect four. Let's play checkers. You know what I'm saying? We used to play um, 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 other games together, like Mad Caps, where we would um, yeah. be in competition with one another. Yeah. And so when children want to be close to their parents, they spend time with them. You hear so this? Now let's take this to the side. Yep. If you want a, a strong relationship with the most high, yep. you cannot achieve that by not dealing with him, by not talking to him, by not giving him any time. The only time you check in, I did a video the other day where I talked about the most high is not to be put on your to-do list. He don't want to be put on your to-do list like, okay, I checked this part out. Um, I prayed five minutes, okay, check. He don't want to be on your to-do list. Oh, you get a feather in your cap for that, okay. The most high, he, he don't <laughs> care about your little sacrifice. You sacrifice five minutes to talk to him. And he gave you that whole day to do what you wanted to do. I did an hours with the reading in the Bible. No, even that, not that sometimes. You see, sometimes we, we give the most high a little bit of time and we check it off on our little little sheet or on our computer, however we keep up, keep up with our schedules, and we think that he's supposed to be happy about that. We give him these little prayers to where, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray by y'all for my soul to keep it up. Some people actually think that that is enough. Or oh, our father which are in heaven, how it be thy name, God in one another. You're saying that real fast, so you can be done with that. Yeah. And so you can say, I'm done, I pray. The most high wants a relationship with each and every one of us. A us. real relationship. A real relationship. Yeah. He doesn't want to be a part of your schedule. As in, um, I'm gonna put I'm gonna pencil him in a little bit of time here and there. Like we said so many times, we have a <coughs> that throughout your day, I don't care what you're doing, whether you're driving a high low whether you're driving in a car or in your room or whatever, whether you're working in the garden, driving on the road, walking in the garden, whatever you're doing, you can talk to the most high. Yeah. Because guess what? He's he's constantly talking to us. And he's he he stands at the door and knocks. 
to see if we will hear what his word has to say to us. He says, seek me and you will find me. Knock and it will be open. You see, even though he's standing at the door and knocking, he's also telling us to knock. You see, like you said earlier, his knocking is a little bit different. It's not him begging us. Yeah. He is telling you to choose me this day. Do you want a relationship with me? You want to choose this path or that path? I want you all to understand something about your flesh. The Most High has a path, right? And we talked about you having a path too, right? Your path can actually line up with his because his other path right here is other things that are trying to pull you in a direction. So you are the person that's standing here and you have a path to choose. Am I going to be led by the Most High or am I going to be led by evil spirits or demons? For my own desires, because our own fleshly, fleshly desire, remember it says, the flesh wars against the spirit. So that means our flesh is actually in alignment with wickedness, right? But we have to bring our flesh under subjection so that it can be alignment with the most high. So that where he leads us, we will follow. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. You know, the, the example you gave of a child and their parents. You know that's such a good example about seeking seeking uh, uh, yeah he imagine now let's say look at my son um shim and somebody asked him uh shim do you want to get closer to your father and he said yeah yeah i want to be closer to my dad right and then then i go and i ask him i say shim come on man want to go fishing with me nah i don't want to go fishing okay well shim uh come on man let's go outside man throw the football nah i don't want to throw the football well, what do you want to do, man? I just want to. I, I, I just want to go and do my own thing. He walks all off. So when you sitting there scratching, you're like, what? You want to get closer to him, but you don't want to spend no time with him? I don't know where you want to get closer, and you don't. So then it don't make sense, right? Of course, that ain't Shim. Shim, if I say, Shim, let's go fishing, he, he'd be out in the car if I can get out there. <laughs> with his rod, you know? And so basically what we're trying to say is when you say, you want to draw nigh to someone. Now, I got another example. Here's a real good one. Now, those of you remember dating your spouse, right? Now, you remember when you first met the person, right? I know when I first met you. Right? Can you imagine when me and the bar met if if I or the bar were like, um, when I tried to talk with her and she just looked and said um uh i don't feel like calling you or if i called her she picked up the phone uh, uh okay yeah yeah but i'm busy right now click right we've never had this relationship right <laughs> am i right we would never have this relationship if that, that's how she started trying to draw a night to her and get to uh, get to know her right she would never, we never would have a relationship. We never would have gotten married if she just stayed distant from me. If I come around to try to take her out, I say, yeah, yeah, let's go out. Let's go out, um, out to dinner. Oh, no, I don't want to. I already ate, you know. <laughs> if the relationship was like that, guess what? We wouldn't have these kids. We wouldn't be married with these kids. It's impossible. So you want a relationship with Yah? What are you doing to draw nigh to him? What do you do to get close to him then if you want a real relationship? Because I got news for you. We're not talking about religion. Huh? We're not talking about drawing nigh to religion. We're talking about drawing nigh to a person. Yah is not a religion. He is a person. He talks and feels just like we do. You understand what I'm saying? You know, the scripture actually says they draw nigh to me with their lips. No, you hear that? But their heart is far from me. So you say it all day long. The most I ain't no joke. He ain't stupid. Yeah. So we can say all we want that we do this, that, and the other. The most I knows our heart. Yep, he so knows. We can't just draw a nigh to him with our lips. Yeah, that has to be followed up by actions. That's right. We have to prove our love to him. Unlike what? what people try to push off and say, well, yeah, I know it's my heart. When you try to say that, Most High says, look, I am not stupid. I know what's in your heart. And your heart is not with me. You see? Your heart is not with me. 
So we have to make sure that when we say that we love the Father, that, that we love and adore him, and that we worship and praise him, we have to make sure that our actions follow up with that as well. That's right. Now, you know, it's amazing. It goes back to, again, what I said about the relationship now. Now, here's another good example. Imagine this, right? Me and my wife, we're dating, right? We're not married yet. Let's say we're dating, no kids, and we're dating. And my wife comes, and you know, I, 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 get, I call her, and I say, hey, let's go out. And she say, okay, go out. And I said, yeah, I want to take you over here. And she said, no, I don't want to go over here. I want to go over here. I said, okay, all right. So the next time I come get her, I said, okay, uh, yeah, I want to take you over there. I don't want to go over there. I'm going to go to this place over here. I'm like, okay. All right. Third time. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I got this day plan for us. We're going to go here. We're going to go there. Uh, no, I don't want to do any of that. I want to do this here and do that there. Well, you know that's going to get tired, right? Hmm? Don't you know what's going to happen? What's going to happen is eventually I'm going to sit there and say, man, this person is selfish because all they want to do is what they want to do, but they don't want to do nothing as far as what I want to do. So what do you think that's going to happen with that relationship, right? Don't you know y'all are the same way? Huh? Me and my wife wouldn't have a relationship that we have today if she was like that or if I was like that. If one of us was more toward one way, huh? If one of us was more toward one way, one of us was, was putting, uh, no, 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 and no, I want this, I want my way, my way, my way. If either one of us had been that way, we wouldn't have no relationship because she would have gotten tired of it and I would have gotten tired of it. You get what I'm saying here, huh? It's because we had balance and we were willing to give in with one another and say, you know what? Yeah, let's do that. That's fine. And then she'd say that to me, oh, yeah, okay, let's do that. That's fine. I can enjoy that, right? And then we found we find ourselves being able to have a relationship. Y'all feels when we think we're gonna come into a relationship with him with that stuff. <laughs> I don't think you know who you're dealing with, huh? You ain't gonna come in no relationship with yeah with that kind of thing. Ain't no selfishness coming into a relationship with y'all. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, will force his will in your life. He will. He, he will. has his way in the heaven above. That's right. That's right. And even with even with people who <laughs> uh, do wickedly. Yeah. You know, someone had uh, posted. Um, I can't remember if it's on Facebook or if it was a comment on YouTube or whatever. But they asked the question. They said, "Who created evil?" The scripture clearly tells you that Yah created evil. Yep. Yeah. He created evil. He created. Yeah. Everything that we see is what he wanted there's nothing happening in this world that he is not aware of that's right <laughs> you see and so when we understand the magnitude of the power of god we will stop trying to, to go against his will because there is a such thing as going against his will and when you do that there are consequences now i want i want to say this real quickly now i know a person will say well wait a minute don't it seem like it's one side of those seems like all y'all want is his will so I'm gonna explain some to you what I'm gonna what I'm, what I'm to get understand this, right? Let me tell you what Yah does. He does say, okay, because with me, I want to go into fashion design and the modeling, right? So most I stood back and said, I'm not gonna fight you. You wanna go into that? Go right in. Right? <laughs> so when I wander into that, try to go into that thing. And I started started seeing the stuff that was going on. It got my eyes open. And I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. And it was to the point that where I said, I said, you know what? I can't, I can't go into this stuff. It's, they fooling up in here. You know, I was going to a fashion college at the time, taking up merchandising and designing and all of that stuff. And and modeling. And when we went to, there was a, a shop called Winston's Men's Shop. Okay, and we were getting suited the model for Winston's Men's Shop. It was in the Renaissance downtown Detroit. So we go down there, get measured up. The guy that was measuring us was gay. And I didn't like that. I said, man, take measure on my back. You know, I mean, 
I mean, I, 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 I didn't want it. You know what I'm saying? I want you measuring me, you know? And so we got the suits on. We finally um, changed, put our suits on. We went out and modeled, and I noticed a lot of the um, people that were in the fashion industry were gay. And a lot of the models were gay. And there was only a few of the fellas that was in the class, and we were, we were cool and straight, you know? But we were sitting there looking at that, at that and I said, this ain't sitting well with me, you know, trying to model. And and we seeing all these this this homosexual thing going on. Then I started to do my research. That's why I tell you what, I want to be a designer. I design my own stuff. It isn't that the right. So I started researching these designers. And guess what I discovered? Most of the designers out there were gay. Versace, Calvin Klein, Bill Blast, all these guys were gay. Armani, gay. You know, people were into Armani suits. The uh, homeboys wearing Armani suits. These were the top of the line suits back in the days, right? Uh, get me an Armani suit, Giorgio Armani, right? Well, I discovered that Giorgio Armani designed the suits a certain way so that the shoulders would come down, they wouldn't be so broad because he was trying to add a feminine touch to his suits because he was gay. And yet, you remember the movie Gigolo. A lot of you, a lot of you all are too young, too young to remember the American Gigolo, the movie that came out with Richard Gere in it, where he lined up all those suits on the thing, and he's supposed to be a Gigolo like a player, player out there after women, but he wearing suits that's tailored to look more feminine. <laughs> but every man in the world was going after those suits and wanted to be like a player, player. This is the kind of manipulation they do in that industry. So when I begin to notice all of that stuff. I didn't want nothing to do with it. And so both sides said, yeah, you want to go into that? Come here, I'll let you go. After I got on and got in and started trying to go into the industry and I saw what I saw, the wickedness, I said, you know what? Okay, came back to the father. All right, okay, I don't want to go into that. And he's like, oh, I didn't think you would want to go into that after you see what's in it, mm -hmm. you see? So that's the kind of thing that Yah does because he has a will and he may say, okay, okay, I'll let you go into this direction. I was trying to become an officer. Now he really blocked me on that one and I'm glad he did. He blocked me on it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I thank y'all for his will in my life as well. You know, we, we, have, we have things that we desire, but we have to make sure family that our desires line up yes. with y'all's desires. I don't know. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so it's just crazy, you know, when you, you just got to know that y'all want you to go in because some of the things you want to go in, make, I used to be a sculptor, right? I want to do um, statues and all of that kind of stuff, right? Most I was like, nope, I don't want you doing that. When he showed it to me and made me see it, then I was like, but I loved it. And I said, okay, well, I won't do it because it went against y'all's word. And so Life with Yah is a life of, of sacrifices. If you want to get close to him, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have to sacrifice something. Don't think you're going to get close to him and not sacrifice things in your life. No such thing as getting close to him without giving up something. You understand me? Because there are things about you, there's things about your life, there's things you want to do that's all going to interfere with your walk with him. You understand? And you're going to have to let some of those things go. It's just as simple as that. You're going to have to let some of these things go. Most of you are going to pull up a sheet and you're going to look at it and you're going to say, oh man, I don't want to let that go. I don't want to let this go. Eventually, it got to the point where I started letting go of so much and I, I said, man. But guess what? As I, The more I let go of things that were me that I wanted, the closer I got to y'all, the more my understanding grew, the closer our relationship got. Then he got to the point where I could really hear him speak to me because I have given up so much of myself to where Yah was, he said, drawn out of me, and I'll draw out of you because I was drawn out of him, he was drawn out of me. This is to what I tell you here, right? The measure that you draw out of him, that measure is going to be drawn back unto you. In other words, he's going to implement that same measure back to you so if you draw night him this much a little bit he's gonna draw night you only a little bit <laughs> you 
You know what I'm saying? You draw out of him this much, he gonna draw out of you this much. That's just how it is. Huh? That's how it is. We get a lot of questions where um, people are asking, how do you get close to God? And how do you pray? How do you fast? <clears throat> a lot of that stuff can be learned just through research. Research, yeah. And many times what I find is that people want someone to just type out the answer for them or just speak the answer for them. You get see? Because they really don't want to yeah. do the work. They really don't want to do the seeking. So that's actually a revealing of your heart. Yeah. And you don't want to take the time to um, see what fasting is all about, to see what meditation is all about, uh, to see how to have a close relationship with God. All that's involved in this is, is seeking and praying and reading and um, consecration sometimes, sometimes uh, setting yourself apart. I'm not talking to a sister who, um, who was saying, and, and I agree that we should uh, put ourselves on a fast where we're fasting from the conveniences of this, this life. I mean, even laying aside those things, I mean, you find it difficult to do because we're so used to everything being so easy for us. Most of us wouldn't even survive, wouldn't have survived during the times of slavery like our ancestors did if we were to, if there was some kind of way to transcend time and go back. Mm -hmm. Most of us would die within that first week. <laughs> first week. Because we wouldn't know what to do. We wouldn't have a clue. Yep. You see, and it's unfortunate that we've gotten ourselves to a point to where we don't desire to seek, we don't desire to put that time in it. You know, there's an old Christian song that used to say, put your time in because payday is coming after a while. <clears throat> Most of us don't want to do that. We want it yeah. easy. We want somebody to tell me, show me, hold my hand. Now, yeah. what if that is not an option? Are you just going to fold up and die? Yeah. Naturally and spiritually? If you really truly want this relationship with Yah to be strengthened, you have work to do. Yeah, you got work. Relationships to do. cannot be one sided. Can't be one sided. And as we um, have demonstrated, Yah is not going to have a one sided relationship with you to where he's the one doing all the pulling and the tugging. Mm. He's not going to do it. You see? So the burden is on us to seek him while he may be found. The burden is placed on us, family. And so we have to take heed to that. That's right. Take heed to the to the word when it tells us to seek him while we may be found. Because Yah is not play. We are in some very strange times. <clears throat> if you look around and you don't see the strangeness of the atmosphere, <laughs> so, then you must you, be in love. You you blind. If you can't see the strangeness of what's going on right now, then you must be blind. Let me share something with you, right? Think of the ten virgins, right? Five were wise, five were foolish. They were all asleep. Every last one, the, the wise and the foolish were all asleep, and it was darkness all around. Think about what I'm saying here. It was darkness all around. Now, when that cry was made, I want you to get what I'm saying here. When that cry was made, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Did he say, the bridegroom coming, just stay right here and he'll come and get you. It said, go ye out to meet him. Now, what if everybody there decided, I oh, know I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to let him find me. My, my they would have all been left. Well, that's what he said. Well, my groom is going to come and pick me up and carry me across the threshold. <laughs> <laughs> You've been left behind. You get yes. what I'm saying? Because... They had to get up and go out to where he was. And that's just how it is. Go ye out to meet him. It's dark. This is the time that we're in. It's darkness. But I know you look out here at this world. It's so beautiful. Beautiful leaves and trees. And you go out here, the butterflies flying all around, little birds, hummingbirds coming right by your head. It's looking so beautiful. And you just want to, everything just beautiful. You know, it look like a, a, a park out here sometimes. You go to certain places, it's so beautiful. You know, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you, keep your eyes open because things are going to change extremely fast. And when it does, you know, you're going to see how beautiful this world is. We're going to see. How unbeautiful, how yeah. not so beautiful. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was being sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gonna see how beautiful it is, but we gonna we gonna make it look. You gonna see this world just like they, uh, um, in Katrina, New Orleans looked a mess when Katrina hit, didn't it? Mm -hmm. That's how this whole world gonna look like that. You see. Someone asked a very um, <laughs> interesting question. Mm -hmm. He said, "How can I stop my children from gaming? Unplug the system. Unplug the system. Who get it out of your electricity. How old are they?" Okay, also now if they grown in the house. It, I mean, you gotta you gotta deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I've learned is that <clears throat> sometimes you have to do that because kids can get very unfocused when it comes to gaming, uh, video games, and things like that. Can be very um, uh, they can get very unfocused. You know, we have to look at this world for what it is. Yeah. This is why the scripture tells us, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And he that loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Designed to do it. We only understood what was happening. It's designed to separate us from the most high. So everything imaginable will be used for that. Yeah. It's, they're going to use everything. They start young, too. Yeah. The enemy starts young. Because right on down to the box of cereal that you uh, with the little games and trinkets and stuff inside, the little uh, things on the back, the little games on the back of the box. <clears> and <throat> nothing is innocent in this world. Yeah. And if you look at everything for what it really truly is, what it, the, the enemy has put all this stuff in place. He's designed these uh, cute little cartoons to try to get into your children's minds yeah. early. Because the enemy wants control of their minds. That's how he does too. And so, when the scripture tells us to train up our children in the way they should, should go, do you think the Most High wants you to give them hours on the end playing video games? Or do you want? Do you think he wants you to teach them what his word says? Hmm? Yeah. If we understand what is happening, there is a fight for our minds. The scripture tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. So the majority of the people that you're dealing with, depending on what their relationship is like, that will tell you what they are being controlled by, or what voice are they hearing or listening to or taking heed to. That's right. You got to understand that, family, that this, yeah. this, this life right now, things have changed, and they're about to change even more. The spiritual warfare is amping up. Oh, no, are you is... ready for it or not? Yeah. It is amping up. Yeah. And so you have to arm yourself. Right? Yeah, yeah, it, it is. The whole army. It is amped up. So let me tell you something. The internet is very. A lot of these things are very distracting. And I want you to think about this, right? How when you think about all the distractions that we have right now, right? I've heard one person say they can't even make it if they don't have their cell phone. Almost as if they just go out their minds without their cell phone. I don't even have a cell phone that I keep on me. I couldn't imagine being that attached to this little box. <laughs> I was just sitting in the car, so if there was an emergency on the road, we dialed it. Yeah, I dialed it. That's the only time I use that thing. If I have to get on the internet, I get on it with the laptop or with the main computer. But and when I look at the attachment that we have to some of this stuff, it's it's it can be it, it's it's distracting. I know it's very distracting to a lot of people. Idiot, if, if we were to go back, let me explain something to you. If we were to go back 30 years to take you and put you 30 years ago, you just give up. You go, oh man, no computers, no Facebook, no cell phones, a beeper, you know. <laughs> what you just beeping a number and oh man, this is horrible. You know, and we would just literally just we just drop someone just dropped it off. Yeah. Spiritually bigger. You know, and it's, it's, it's sad. It is really sad. I'm looking at a lot of people talking about social media here. Whenever there's a storm and the, the power goes out and stuff, most of us in this house, and talking about us, and I can imagine how everybody else is too in their house, we're sitting there, like, damn, I hope they ain't going to take too long to get power back on. We, we act like everything around us is just stopped. Well, when we act like that, I'm going to just keep it real. The reason why it, it can be hard on us because we do run an internet business, mm -hmm. okay, and we run a ministry through the internet too, and so that's why when, when it's out, we be like, man, 
Well, I gotta get shipping out. I gotta get shipping out. I gotta get this done. I gotta get that done. So oh. sometimes we 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 in, in our household we'll be like, oh man. I'm of just course. saying in general that when the power goes off, yeah. everybody feels helpless. Like everybody yeah. looking around, and you know that you got your little light and it's dark. You got your candle, and everybody's just sitting there like in the days. <laughs> like yeah. what, what do we do? <laughs> you know. Yeah. And so. That shows you how attached we are to technology. technology so yes. much so to where if we're without it, we feel helpless. Yeah, exactly. And that is really, truly a bad place to be. Yeah, it is. Because when the grid it. fails, at some point it will. And we're going to be thrust back into situations, like I said before, many times in your broadcast, that many of us would make it in the fairy days. We would be finished. Yeah. That's a bad place to be in. Yeah. Well, I know one thing. I know what the scripture says, and I know what prophecies have already been fulfilled. And I know that if you were to look at prophecies, hey, I know if we were to look at prophecy, I know if we were to look at prophecy, then we would um, see that things are changing. Mm -hmm. Excuse us for a moment. We have a little eight-year-old who has to be dealt with. <laughs> okay, now, and so looking at prophecy, I'm able to say, okay, we are getting closer than we were a lot closer. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, we don't see prophecy though those of you out there that, that haven't saw some of the things that we've seen in the news so to you you may think oh yeah yeah we probably got another 50 years oh you think so <laughs> we got another 50 years you tell you something if, I, I would be surprised if we have another five years that we now i'm not saying things gonna happen if i'm not prophesying but i would be surprised if we got another five years when things continue to go as it's going right now, I'll be really surprised. And that's because I've already seen some of the prophecies that's come to pass. And I know the time, the date, I know how many um years the prophecy dealing with us being in captivity. It's just a number of things like that that I'm looking at, and it tells me we're right at the door. Okay. So I think this is a very interesting question that just came across in the chat. And I, I, I want to I want to tackle this. It says, "Can the Bible be an idol?" Yes, I it can. <laughs> yes, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Let me I prove it to you. Right? Look at all of the religions that deal with the scriptures, the Bible. Right? Look at them. all of them that stem down from the Catholic Church to the Baptist, Pentecostal, all these churches and religions. Right? All these. Do you know that the majority of them? really don't even know y'all the majority do you know what i'm saying their relationship is based on oh i go to church and i have this bible mm -hmm. that's what their relationship is and they told that book around like they really know y'all and they really don't even know never never he never they, they have never spoke to him and they don't hear from him mm -hmm. and they really don't have a real relationship with them they just they they just scripture readers they're religious folk so yeah, yeah, the scriptures can be an idol. Absolutely. You got people that 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 um if the Bible was to get burned up or something, uh, folk go out there and go, oh my god, the scriptures the Bible's on fire, you know. They go out there now. This is just paper. You understand what I'm saying? That's why you're supposed to write it in your heart, because it's just paper. Yeah, and I think about the different versions of the Bible too. There are literally some people who believe that if it's not the King James Version. Yeah that is not valid and so that uh version of the bible has become an idol to them yes yeah, sorry daddy <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. the, the, the bible the image of the false image all that stuff can be <clears throat> um idolized even if even his real name can be idolized mm -hmm. you know even we as a people who we are as a people can be an idol too Right? It has become that. It has become that. We're going to bring out a lot of that in this documentary that we're working on. That's right. Because our identity, for some, for a lot of so-called Hebrew Israelites, 
their identity as a people has become more important to them than their service and obedience to the most high. To the most high. That's right. So they're literally disobeying Yah but paying all this homage to who they believe they are in the flesh, who they say they are in the flesh. That's Making right. songs about who they are in the flesh. That's praising right. who they are in the flesh. Dressing up <clears throat> in the sheep's clothing. The inwardly. They're dressing themselves in the sheep's clothing, <laughs> yep. but inwardly are ravening wolves. Ravening wolves. That's ravening right. wolves. They got their fringes on them. Yeah, but they are wolves and brute beasts on the inside. Yeah, exactly. Someone said the cross. Yeah, that's right. That cross is mm -hmm. idolized. There's so much is idolized these days, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not going to hold y'all um, uh, too much longer. We got we answering a few questions, and um, I want you to really take to heart what we said in this lesson, and. Draw nigh to God and strengthen your relationship with Him. Strengthen your relationship with Him the same way you strengthen your relationship with your spouse when you first met Him. The same way your kids try to strengthen their relationship with you. They want to spend time with you, come and sit next to you. This, these are the kind of things you got to do spiritually with God. You got to find time to sit next to Him. You got to find time to listen to Him, listen to Talk His guidance. Him in on yeah. your schedule. <laughs> your schedule. <laughs> That's funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As if you have some time to give him. Yeah. Think about that for a minute. I'm going to give him. He's the one who breathes breath in your body, woke you up this morning. It's in him you live, move, and have your yeah. being. But here you are saying, I'm going to give y'all some time. I'm going to give him some time. Yeah. Isn't that something? That's so you arrogant. You don't even understand. It really sounds so <laughs> arrogant when you think about it. I'm going to give y'all pencil him in a little time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, don't get me wrong, y'all don't expect us to sit down all around all day with the Bible all uh, pressed up in our face. That's not what he expects. He knows that we have things to do. We have to feed the family, we got to pay bills, we got to go to work, do all of that kind of stuff. Yah is not, um, you know, insensitive to those things. But at the same time, when he looks at your heart, he has to understand, he has to know that you're being sincere when you do spend time with him. Is that sincere time, or are you just giving or meeting a quota? That's right. Don't make y'all a part of your quota. That's make right. Make him a part of your life. Someone had a very interesting question here. Kid Watson, do all women have to spend time in, in the home and not work according to the word? Hmm. Can I hit that one? Go right here, baby. Hit it. Hit it. I'm going to take y'all right to Proverbs 31. Was the Proverbs 31 woman, the woman that just sat at home and did nothing? Most of the time when people quote the Proverbs 31 woman, they're, they're, talking, they're, they're just talking about, oh, she's so weak and so quiet. I'm still trying to find that in that passage, okay? This was a woman who was taking care of her family, taking care of her household. It says that she was in the marketplace selling goods that she obviously made. Yep. Things that she made with her hands. She was a businesswoman. They said that she considers a field and, buy and she buys it. Meaning she sees some land. She says, oh, this is a good purchase. Let's buy this land. Hey, what's she going to do with the land? Huh? Virtuous loan. What are you planning on doing with that land? Oh, I'll probably start a vineyard. I'll probably do this. I'll probably do that. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. She's a virtuous woman and she's considering business. Mm -hmm. You understand? So she ain't out there wasting time. Don't get me wrong. She's not held up in the house all the time, but she's not out wasting time either. This woman is out there handling her business. Now, I want to say something. And her children and her husband oh, are her blessed. Now, I want to share this with you, too. Now, you got to understand this for a minute, right? Now, a woman do have to be careful about working for other people. That's right. Notice this virtuous woman work for herself pretty mm -hmm. much. But she a woman gotta be careful about working for other people because the workplace can be very brutal as it relates to dealing with women and and men. Okay, working on jobs, uh, their relationships fall apart because of lust and things that go on in the workplace. Okay. Husbands and wives, you know, the temptation out there and all of that kind of stuff. And it's just, it's brutal. The workplace is brutal for women, period. 
I think that in all honesty that a woman should seek the most high and 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 and, and talk to her husband and find out if it's if it's Yah's will for them to be at a certain job, working a certain job for someone else, as opposed to because you know, I, I, back in the days, with my wife, she worked a job um place and I felt like I want my wife to I want her to be off from this job because I saw how people can be on these jobs. Supervisors can be grieving now your back like they devils, you know. And I wanted her off of that job. I didn't like that the, the tension and the stress they were putting her under. I mean it was ridiculous. It made me want to go up there and, and I don't want to say it. Okay, but you know what I mean. Make me want to go up there and say something to somebody, you know. But I when I saw that I wanted my wife out of the job. I said, you know what, I don't really like you working for people. So I worked hard to so that she could retire and we we her both worked hard actually. You know, she had way things that she wanted to do. We said, okay, we're gonna make this happen. And we did, and I got her out of working when she didn't have to work a job no more. And then she did the same for me. She said, you know what, I'm gonna work hard with this business, we're gonna work hard what we're doing so that you don't have to work for anyone. And that's and I, I, I really like the idea of doing your own thing. And I think that women that want to be like a virtuous woman, that could be a plus to your man because it could actually free him up if what you're doing becomes that successful. You understand? Uh, here's another question from Monica. She says, what if the roles are reversed and the man is at home and the woman works instead? Now, this day and time, I don't want us to focus on how things were thousands of years ago, right. but in this day and time, it's not a problem with that as long as um, the the man and the woman have this understanding and um, things are being taken care of at home. We right. have situations, and I'm going to use uh, one situation that uh, we know of, particular. Um, there was a brother who um, he actually left a corporate job, and his wife is still in corporate America. But when he left his job, he decided to become an urban farmer. And some of you may know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And he has taken this urban farming to such a successful place. Yes. To such a successful place, his brother be on getting interviewed, television interviews, magazine interviews, all kinds of things. Um, he's, um, he has established different organizations and different events throughout his area. And he's teaching people how to transform the hood for good. The hood for good. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And so this brother and his family, they took their situation, like I said, he left corporate America to do this because healthy eating and survival of his family and self-sufficiency was important to him. So he wasn't somebody who just, okay, um, I'm not going to work. My wife don't work. I'm going to sit back home at home on my butt and do that. That's not what took place. Video games. This, ain't, oh. this ain't what took place. This young man, um, he he did something that's not just helpful for his family, but for others as well, because they are also educating others in what it is he does. Now, let me explain some things. Now, you know, because she's in corporate America, she's busy, right, during the day. So, you know he's handling everything he's supposed to handle at home. So if they got kids, you know he's dealing with everything he's supposed to deal with with the kids. Yeah, he the ain't kids. just letting the kids just run wild in the house, right? Mm -hmm. He's handling all that. So that's how the man got to be there. If that's the situation that they're in, then everything got to be taken care of or else it won't work. Mm -hmm. And with this brother, from what I understand, he's handling everything. He's doing that his part. She's doing her part. And they're making it work. Mm -hmm. You see, so I think both of them are doing it now. I'm not for sure mm -hmm. because things have just been so great with with how they did things. Yeah. Another good example: uh, there was a young man who uh, played the piano so well that he started to give people lessons in doing the piano. Yes. Right. Eventually, they started um, selling their CDs on piano lessons, and from there, I mean, they started making a couple million a year just from doing that. And I'm talking about an Israelite couple, black folk. Yeah. So they, they took it from there to now they're doing so well. They've gotten beyond the piano lessons now. <laughs> they're, they're teaching other people how to market your skills. If you have a skill that other people want and want to learn, they're teaching you how to market your skills the way that they market their piano skills. That's you right. see, and so this was a brother, too, who came out of corporate America. I'm going to take the skills that I have, and I'm going to teach others how to do it from home. So 
Yeah, you can flip the page around to where the woman is working and the man is at home. But this it has to be something that is productive is going on because yeah. among the so-called Hebrew Israelites, we have seen many examples to where the men, some of them in many cases will um, get a wife, she's working, and he's literally doing nothing. He is come home. No, no, let me tell you what he's doing. Cooks. Let me tell you how he's doing it. Uh, I get to be in the Torah all day. You know, I, I, no, I don't have time to cook. I don't have time to do all these other things. I need to study the word all day long. You go work. Matter of fact, I'm going to give me another wife up in here so she can do all the cleaning and stuff and cooking. And you work and you bring the money in. Because so I got She bringing in the money, you doing the cooking. Matter of fact, I may give me another wife, three. And that way, this one here can do all the um, dealing with the clothes. And I'll get one dealing with the dishes and cooking. This one here dealing with the clothes and washing. And uh, maybe I get four wives, okay? And this one here, she can teach the kids. You know, she can homeschool the kids. And this is the kind of thinking we got. And this brother just sit back all day long. And looking at vids, reading scripts. <laughs> Our people back in the day weren't reading scripts all the time. In fact, they didn't have this. Exactly. Years ago. They had teachers who instructed them and showed them y'all's laws and things of that nature. But for a man to literally think that he's supposed to have his face plastered in the Bible all day, right, while his wife works, you you are obviously not reading. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. said, if a man don't work, he don't eat. He don't eat. You know what it say? If he don't work, he don't eat. <laughs> Monica said that's pimpology. Pimpology, yeah, that's what <laughs> that's called being a pimp. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a pimp daddy, laugh out loud. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I tell you yeah, it's good. Think about this lesson. Think about what we talked about. You get time, go over this lesson again. Listen to the words, listen to what we're saying. Get it down in your system. Okay? You got to draw nigh to Yah. You got to get close to Him because He wants you to, He does want you to have a relationship with Him. But he, He's trying to bring you to the point where you want that relationship enough to do whatever you have to do to have that relationship. Now, let me ask you that question. Are you willing to do whatever you have to do to have a real relationship with him? Be honest. Are you willing to do whatever it is you need to do to have a real close relationship with Yah? Huh? Are you? Huh? Or are you just talking? Just like the word said, these people, they draw nigh with me with their heart, you know, with their mouths. He said, but their heart is far from me. They lips, they got lip service. They draw an idea with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. One more question here. One more question. Okay. <laughs> well, it's just a few, but um, this person wants to know, can a godly woman own land and property by herself in order to supply needs to her family and neighbors? Um, now, is this question um, based on a married woman, or are you saying this woman is single and owns property? Because if yeah. she's single, she can definitely do that. Yeah. Um, there's nothing in scripture that requires you to have a husband in order to own land. Right. You see, so but if you're, if you're married though, on. if you're married though, you don't want it by yourself, right. or you want your husband. He, he's the head, right? That's right. So. So I guess without that bit of information, it depends on whether she's married or single. So. Hallelujah. Okay. I don't see any more that we're going to address. Okay. Well, we're going to ask you all to pray for us. Keep us in your prayers. We'll pray for you. Um, and just continue to seek the most high. Continue to draw nigh to him. Strengthen your relationship, please. It took us three By years to write it out. I'm sorry, yeah. that was a, a It took us three years. The first write it out. It took us three years. Yeah. For That's many good. different reasons. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of research going on to write it out. Yeah. So the first one, we had to do a lot of research. So, um, 
I want you to enjoy your day, enjoy the rest of your day. Get in the word, relax. Um, you know all the things the scriptures say you can do. Do you know? Relax. Get close to y'all. To the brother who asked, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. To the brother who asked if we have any tutoring on on gardening. Um, at this time, we don't. We just share videos from time to time of what we have growing. But I do believe that that is something um, definitely worth getting into. Um, in the past, I used to show how we would transplant certain things, and, yes. and I would talk about how we mix the soil and things of that nature. But I haven't done any extensive videos lately on gardening in particular that actually shows you how to do it. But um, those things take time, and it would be nice to actually have something like that. There's a lot of um, videos on YouTube that actually instruct you on various things. So we ourselves go to YouTube University to learn a lot of things. But I understand how sometimes uh, we want to see our own people giving these instructions. So definitely uh, we get that. And if time permits, that maybe at some point we will do that. Hallelujah. Okay, well, on that note, we love you. We love you, family. Yes, absolutely. And we thank you all for joining us again for another Shabbat. Yes, absolutely. Well, we want you to enjoy the rest of your day. Mm -hmm. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat shalom.